high dropout rates in secondary schools, Rabat's education officials have launched a teacher training project aimed at encouraging students to stay in class and pursue careers. Training programs have been provided so that teachers are better qualified to help children learn better and enjoy classes more. There are a lot of initiatives that the government has taken on to strengthen education at the local level, the way it's delivered, the decentralization effort. Education in Morocco is free and compulsory through primary school. However, many children, particularly in rural areas, do not attend schools and most of those who do drop out after elementary school. The country's literacy rate reveals wide gaps in education, both in terms of gender and location. Literacy rates are estimated at 39.6% among women and 65.7% among men. The challenges that families have of keeping their kids in school, especially when they are rural and have to send their kids away from home, you know, sending your 11, 12-year-old daughter away from home, to go live somewhere, there's a lot of worries about that, not just the quality of education, but her security, her well-being, her psychosocial. Sabrina, who has come to Morocco as an exchange student at Rabat University, has noticed that even though females are more illiterate than men, once given the opportunity to an education, the Moroccan women are more motivated to study than the men. Even if like, illiteracy is higher among women, um, I've noticed um, that in the University of Morocco, Women are way more dedicated and they spend way more time studying. Another problem as to why the education system is suffering is the problem of language. The problem dates back since the reforms of 1975 when education was taught just in French. Now Arabic is being taught in primary and secondary schools and French at university. The Institute Amadeus therefore believes that the switch of language from Arabic to French can be confusing for some pupils to cope with. According to educational organizations, although education is weak and the rate of youth dropout is still very high, the government has been making a lot more effort in improving the education system in these last few years. However, some feel that it still has a long way to go. Norf Hakim, Press TV, Rabat. Look closely in the vibrant street markets of Rabat or Casablanca and you'll find hundreds of children, some as young as seven years old, working 40 hours or more every week. There are more than 600,000 child laborers in Morocco, 11% of the country's children, and half of them are girls. I have been working as a domestic laborer in South Morocco for two years. I was working hard. My employers were beating me. Whenever I saw children going to school, it reminded me that I could not go to school myself, and I was heartbroken. With no chance to go to school, El Buktawea and others like her will grow up illiterate, poor, and desperate. But on a cliff edge along the rocky Moroccan shore, a sign of hope is rising above the crumbling walls of an old fortress. Inside is another world, not one of desperation, but a world of magic, illusion, excitement, and a chance at a new life. Here at the circus school, children trapped in the cycle of poverty and child labor can experience a world they never dreamed possible. Thanks to the efforts of a local community group, after free lessons in juggling and trapeze practice, they spend time in a nearby classroom, going to school, just like most other girls their age. Outside the circus tent, the realities in Morocco are slowly changing. Child labor rates have fallen slightly in the past 10 years. Experts with ILO's International Program for the Elimination of Child Labor and other organizations say that's in part due to innovative programs like the circus school and to a dramatic rise in school enrollment. Morocco now offers primary school education to almost all children, with enrollment jumping from 52% in 1991 to 92% today. El Buktawaya is one of the success stories. She's 16 now and in the fifth year of her primary education. Child labor is part of her past, not her future. But the risks remain. In Morocco, for more than 40% of the population are at or below the poverty line. That makes it all the more likely that a death, a divorce or a disability in the family will mean that children will be sent out to work to replace lost family income. For girls like El Buktawaya, the circus school is no illusion. It is a dream come true. 
a unique chance at an education and the skills to win a paying job and a better life for her and her family. The best thing to do is to repair the roofs of classroom. They are because they are leaking. They can also build a library for us, repair the bathrooms. Sometimes bottles form on the way to the, to the bathroom. Children get their school clothes dirty. In the cafeteria, some children get food, some do not. If we receive more support, then all students can have food. And it's very important because of all the poverty in this region. So, the books, uh, the school provides them for them. Okay, and the notebooks? Too? Yeah, the, notes, the notebooks, they give them like four at the beginning, because they give them all that in the beginning of the year. Okay. The school year. So they get a new one each yeah, year. Yeah, so they give them the books and this uh, checkboard. checkboard and the, the copy books or the notebooks. But then if the, if the copy book uh, has finished, and so he has to buy another one. Right. Okay. And all and also the pencils or the they have to buy. Yeah, they, they they give them to them at the beginning of the school year, but then if they finish, they have if to they lose them, yeah, yeah, use they them. have to buy them. Okay. Uh, in winter time, the weather is so cold. Children cannot go to school. It's not like in the city, where there is the transportation bus. Uh, here there is nothing. The road is full of snow, there is half a meter of snow and children are sinking in it. There is also another problem when there is flood. River. Children cannot find a way to cross the river. Just six or seven days ago, the river killed a kid. The river destroyed the bridges and children have to walk to a good team so as to cross the river and go to school. Children of 6th and 6th grades go to school, however, the 1st and 2nd and 3rd grade children do not go because of the snow and cold, it's difficult. The elder children just take their umbrellas and go to school. They just take risks. And finally, we end up in Morocco, where schools in Marrakesh are going beyond the basics of reading and math to teach their students what they call respect. Shahida Amin of Egyptian Television gives us a lesson. Hind recently lost her father in a car accident and is trying to get over her tragic loss. Since her parents' divorce, Afef has been feeling unwanted and insecure and Aisha is a victim of domestic violence. These girls no longer have to suffer in silence. At this secondary school in Marrakesh, the students are being urged to open up and discuss their problems with an expert confidant at the school's listening center. Fauzia Rafiq says she's been trained to listen and extends her support and assistance to the girls in need and the children's voices are being heard outside the listening center as well. 
For in Morocco's so-called schools of respect, dialogue, participation and collective decision-making are the defining features. The link quality education to human rights in general and uh, children's rights in particular. We are talking uh, about a school of uh, respect, we are talking uh, about uh, innovation, we are talking a, a school which is open to its com community. An initiative launched in 2004 by the Moroccan government in collaboration with UNICEF, these schools consult children on their education and give them a say in their own schooling. An endeavor that is collective, that is participatory, that may take longer but is a solid way of reaching their goals because everyone is engaged. In another school of respect, in an impoverished district of Marrakesh, we found the students out in the school yard, plucking weeds from the soil. The boys have planted lemon and olive trees and are also growing a variety of vegetables for the school meal. We asked the students what the word respect means to them. It means respecting our environment, says this 12-year-old boy. If we respect people, they will respect us too, says another. Mothers are invited to teach students traditional crafts like needlework and painting on glass. These classes establish links between home industries and future careers for the girls. By offering these kids quality education based on human rights, the schools are capturing society's energy and becoming engines for change and achievement.